With this problem, we have to draw free body diagrams for the two objects in the system, in other words, M1 and M2. Let's consider M1 first. The forces acting on M1 are the force of gravity acting vertically downwards, that's M1g. The tension in the rope acting upwards along the slope, that's T. And the force of friction is acting downwards along the slope in the opposite direction to the movement of the block. In order to draw the free body diagram for this object, we will use a coordinate system whereby the x-axis is acting upwards along the slope and the y-axis is perpendicular to the slope. If we resolve the force of gravity into two components, one acting down the slope, that's m1g sine 30, and one perpendicular to the slope, that's m1g cos 30. We're now in a position to draw our free body diagram, which has just come up on the screen now. Um, in addition to the forces I had on the previous diagram, I've now got the normal reaction force, the purple vector there, N, which is perpendicular to the slope. The free body diagram for the other mass, M2, is now shown on the screen. Here we've got M2G, the weight acting downwards, and T, the tension in the rope, again acting upwards. For this free body diagram, I'm going to use a coordinate system whereby the x-axis is horizontal and the y-axis is vertical. Okay, let's go back now to mass M1 and let's consider the equation of motion in the x-direction for this mass. The resultant force in the x direction is T minus M1G sine 30 minus F subscript F, which is equal to the mass M1 times its acceleration in the x direction. That just comes straight from plugging the resultant force into Newton's second law. We'll call that equation 1. Now we write down the equation of motion in the y direction. In the y direction, we have the mass times the acceleration is equal to the resultant force, which is N minus M1g cos 30 degrees. And because there is no acceleration in the y direction, we can put that equal to zero. Transposing that equation then gives us that N is equal to M1g cos 30. We know that the friction force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force N. So just substituting for N from the previous equation gives us our equation 2. If I now substitute equation 2 into equation 1, I get that T minus M1G sine 30 degrees minus mu m1g cos 30 degrees is equal to m1a1x. Transposing that gives me my equation 3 as shown on the screen now. Okay, that's our two equations of motion considered for the uh, mass M1. Now we can go to mass M2 and consider its equation of motion. The resultant force on mass M2 is just T minus M2G, which is equal to M2A2Y, which gives us T is equal to M2A2Y plus G. Now A2Y must be equal to minus A1X, which will call minus A. Substituting that in, we get equation 4 that T is equal to M2 into G minus A. And now substituting equation 4 into equation 3, we get that M1A is equal to M2 into G minus A minus M1G 
into sine 30 plus mu cos 30. Transposing the equation, we finally end up with the equation for A as being equal to m2g minus m1g into sine 30 plus mu cos 30 divided by m1 plus m2. And if we substitute now the numbers into that expression, m1 is equal to 10 kilograms, m2 is equal to uh, 20 kilograms, mu is equal to 0.2. And evaluating that expression gives us for the acceleration 4.3 meters per second squared.